close to the equator, the sun sets near six o'clock the year round. In Cameroon, West Africa, the call to worship ushers into Sabbath at Nanga Iboka Seminary. As the sun lowers, the school family make their way to the campus church. No pretentious building, simply a tin roof overhead, hard concrete underfoot. But the tune is familiar. So familiar that it quickly becomes a catalyst, uniting the hearts of one continent with those of another. Cameroon is a republic situated right at the bend of the great western hump of Africa. Independence was gained from France and Britain in 1961. Until then, the two sections of the country were known as the Cameroons. A picturesque country, Cameroon is a land filled with contrasts, rugged, arid landscapes of the north and west, dense tropical rainforests in the eastern coastal plains. Though larger in size than California, Cameroon has fewer people than metropolitan Los Angeles. The seven million people are divided into more than 100 tribes. In the north, unique little houses are clustered together. This provides some degree of protection from wild animals. Millet, cotton, and peanuts grow on the farmland. Horses, cattle, and sheep graze the hillsides. In the south, near the equator, the climate is tropical. The mass of the people are poor in terms of money, but they grow sufficient food to eat adequately. Cassava is one of the main food crops. The tuberous roots are broken to pieces, dried, ground into meal, and made into bread. Cassava root is also the base for tapioca. Chief export crop is cacao, which is used to make coca and chocolate. Coffee is the second most important cash crop. The percentage of educated people is among the highest of all African countries. Christian missions operate more than half of the 3,000 elementary schools in the country. Yet, the majority of the people still follow historic tribal cultures. Half of them are animists who believe that things of nature have souls. Fifty years ago, Seventh-day Adventist missionaries pioneered the land of Cameroon. In the far interior, 140 acres was selected for a mission station. Here at Nanga Iboka, the first Sabbath school in Cameroon was organized in 1928. At the same time, a little primary school was started. Later, secondary classes were added, then college courses. A few years ago, Sabbath school members around the world provided this new library building. Nanga Iboko has grown into an important training center. Through many pioneering and development years, this school has trained Bible workers, pastors, and evangelists for all the many French-speaking countries of Africa. Today, it is still the only school where theology students can prepare to fill this role. Many of the French territories are still unentered. The urgency of the times compels African youth to prepare for this challenge. The curriculum at Nanga Ipoca is being increased to offer advanced training to the seminary students. But it is evident many of the buildings do not satisfy even minimum requirements. Some of the original mission structures are still being used for major campus functions. A part of the special offering taken on the 13th Sabbath this quarter will provide housing for youth at Nanga Iboka. 
The theology training plan is being structured to include practical experience. Students go out into the bush and build simple shelters. On Sabbath afternoons, they hold branch Sabbath school. And as they begin to sing, the people come. People steeped in sorcery and witchcraft. People who have never before seen a Bible people with a belief in reincarnation. Through the power of the word, these people learn to pray. Less than a mile from the school is a leprosarium. It is one of the 39 leper colonies in Cameroon. Three years ago, the management and operation of this center was turned over to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The government is now phasing out these colonies and setting up treatment centers throughout the country. The patients are being rehabilitated in their own villages. And an education program is helping them understand that most leprosy can be effectively treated and is not contagious. Lillian Probst a registered nurse from Switzerland who has worked 15 years in Cameroon has been in charge of these lepers. If these patients had been treated very quickly early in life, they would not have been so deformed. Managing and caring for these people is no easy assignment. Lillian says that even though the work is not pleasant, she holds deep compassion for these people she ministers to their physical need. She arranges for special tools and materials they need to occupy their time and help them earn part of their living. And she makes sure the families are all supplied with food. The flour, says Lillian, comes from America. It is the sustenance for those lepers and their children who are so bad they cannot raise their own food. From this area of Cameroon, Nanga Iboka, the church has spread for half a century to the east coast, to the northern desert, to the southern tropics. Headquarter offices for the large Equatorial African Union are now located in a prestigious area of Yoanda, capital city of Cameroon. The president of this union, Maurice Zainacher, says more than 17 million people live in this vast territory. There are, however, very few churches in the Central African Republic, Gabon, the Congo, and Chad. Only in Cameroon is the church becoming well established. This growth in Cameroon can be attributed to many endeavors. 23 years ago, a second-hand press was set up in the back room of a primary school. Today, 30 workers are employed. Ten years ago, the literature sales ministry was organized. Today, 25 co-porters cover the towns in bush country. One of these workers, Benjamin, has been responsible for 100 persons accepting Jesus. Five clinics and a 100-bed hospital have been established. One clinic receives 500 copies of Signs of the Times each month from donors in California. This, says Mario Geiger, is a great help in evangelizing the English-speaking area of Cameroon. Latest development in health care has been the provision of dental facilities in one section of the office building at Yolanda. Dr. Bob Prunty is making contact with many influential people of the city as well as serving the needs of hundreds of the national people. The Sabbath school has been an important part of establishing the work. In 1953, a layman started a Sabbath school in the port city of Douala. The following year, a church was organized. In the year 1940, interest developed among the Bulu tribe in the south. Through the years, this has been nurtured by evangelism, 
literature, medical, and educational work. In the Sangmalina area, a secondary school was opened 14 years ago. Today, 185 students are enrolled. This school is actively engaged in methods to reach the people with the gospel. Children throughout the entire area are invited to summer vacation Bible schools. The school director, Hilary Pigeot, says the boys and girls are responsive to the Bible lessons, and many good contacts are made with parents. For six years, John Bikanda was the Cameroon ambassador to the Republic of Central Africa. While visiting his brother one weekend at Nanga Iboka village, he walked into the campus of the seminary one Sabbath and went into church. A staff member greeted him and in conversation invited him to enroll in a Bible course. At home in Yuanda, John began to study the course. Soon he began attending Sabbath services. On March 25, 1975, he was baptized. Within a few months, an old school friend called him. Mave Rostand was highly educated. He was a diplomat, a man who had held many important positions in government, a representative to the United Nations, an ambassador to several countries. Mave confided to Jean that he had experienced a conversion and had given his life to Jesus. But John was not satisfied with his friend's experience. They began to study the Bible every day. Discussions became involved. Meve took the Bible course. He called in some long-time pastor friends. There were strong differences of opinion. And Meve faced a decision. In October 1976, he became a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Mave talks about his concern for his home village of Ambam. His mother still lives there, so Mave goes back. And when he goes back, he tells all his people about the new truths he has learned. At his request, the mission has set up a book station in Ambam, so his people will have access to God's word. Less than four months after his first witness visit, Mave reports 20 persons were keeping the Sabbath. From distinguished men in high offices to the helpless lepers, God is preparing a people in Cameroon for his coming. This is Mission Spotlight.